Before I start, I want to share a new tool that I've learned that has really helped me prepare for very tough and challenging conversations or important meetings, whether it's personal or professional. This has completely changed how I operate meetings, and this tool is very simple. I, before I go into these meetings or tough conversations, I prepare, and I do three things. I start off with understanding what my intention is. What is my intention of this meeting? Next, I outline what I want the outcomes of the meeting to be, very defined outcomes. And lastly, and probably the most important piece of this, is I write down how I want this individual to experience me. And that's probably the most important part. I'm a pretty aggressive East Coast Canadian, passionate, I talk a lot, can talk over people. And that's not how I want people to experience me. So let's put this in a demotion. I'm gonna speak with a salesperson that hasn't been hitting their targets. So I write down how my intention of this meeting, my intention is that they become the best salesperson possible. And I actually start my meeting with that. My intention today is that you become the best salesperson in this company. That kind of forgives everything else I'm about to say and line things up and it's a strong anchor. Then I stay on point with my outcomes my outcome is that they exceed their targets in our company. And the experience is how, if they had to explain to someone, how was your meeting with Ron Lovett? Are they going to say, I, you know, in, in this case, I want their experience to be that I'm empathetic, that I am understanding, I'm supportive, and a great listener. So that tool has absolutely changed how I run meetings, and I hope it's helpful for you. Now. In true East Coast Canadian fashion, I'm going to tell you some stories. So you heard about the industry I was in, very tough, challenging industry. 2011, I lost almost a million dollars. I was at rock bottom. My coach, Andy Biting, and I were just talking about this. I was literally ready to pack it in. I was going to say, just take the company. Someone wants to, I'll donate it to charity at this point. I'm so done with this. And so I'm going to tell you a story about this individual, Ashwani, and how he joined my company as a disgruntled employee and his journey through my company ending up as a passionate stakeholder. And what were the outcomes for this individual and what were the outcomes for my business? So, around 2011, Ashwani joins the company. We were on a big contract in Toronto, a uh, publicly traded trucking firm called Transforce uh, Trucking. Ashwani had worked there for 15 years in a unionized environment, okay? All he did all day is manage the security folks, press some buttons, and write reports. And so we won this contract. We're a little Halifax, Nova Scotia company. And of course, the employees are very nervous. They'd never heard of us before. Who sourced security? So the client calls me. He says, Ron, look, I know this isn't normal practice, but do you mind calling, uh, talking to Ashwani? He's been here for 15 years, and he's very nervous. They haven't heard of you. I said, absolutely. So I get on the phone with Ashwani. I could tell he's a little nervous. In the security guard world, there's no way he's ever talked to a CEO in his past 15 years of, of being in the business, working for multiple companies. He's probably never talked to a senior manager before. So we get on the phone, I said, hi, Schwann. He said, hi. He said, uh, first, I would like to congratulate you on winning the contract. I said, thanks. He said, but, but I have an important question. I said, what's that, Ashwani? He said, what kind of vehicle are you gonna buy? <clears throat> I said, well, look, that's a great question, but..." I'm gonna ask you the question, because you've worked here for 15 years. What kind of vehicle should we buy? He was taken back a little bit, and he said, oh, well, well uh, you know, we should have a, a vehicle that has four-wheel drive because there's tough terrain. And we should have room in the back because we have to load things in. And a light on the top so people can see us driving. I said, look, let me stop you right there, Swanee. You seem to know more about this than I do. So why don't you go find us a vehicle? We'll pay for it, but you find us a vehicle, and if you get us a good deal, we'll pay you $300 commission check. The phone goes silent. You could literally hear a pin drop on that phone call. And all of a sudden, it's like he broke through the gates. So I said, sir, 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 I will find you the best truck and the cheapest truck. And he said, you will not be disappointed. I said, I know I won't, Aswani. So I go down the hall. I talk to my controller. And he says, uh, how'd that go? I said, good. We just told Aswani uh, to go buy us a truck. He said, what, what do you mean? I said, yeah, we're going to give him a bonus if he finds a good one. He said, no, 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 no. I'm the controller. That's what I do, that's my job. I said, look, if you think that 
sitting behind a computer in Halifax, Nova Scotia, you're going to find a better vehicle than this guy who's out for blood, who's going to probably haggle with every car salesman. He's going to be their worst nightmare in Toronto. <laughs> I said, good luck. Of course, you know where the story goes. This is the vehicle that Ashwani bought. It was three years newer and $6,500 cheaper. So, of course, he got the bonus, and I fired the controller. Yeah. <laughs> so the question at this point was, what's the impact? Is this sustainable? Where are we going here? You know, this was the first move of many where I would try something. You know, I'd take a risk. And so fast forward uh, six months later, I'm, I'm having lunch trying to hire the old manager from this account. I'm having lunch with this guy, and I sit down. I said, look, I have a few questions for you. You managed the Transforce account before. Yeah. And you were Shwani's supervisor. Yeah. I said, you guys had a vehicle on site? He said, yeah. I said, I have a question. Was the vehicle clean inside? He said, look, I don't want to talk bad about people because he's a good guy, but it was so messy, we had to write him up on multiple occasions. So I remembered that. I had to rush out of Toronto. I'm going through the airport. I come across a colleague of mine, Jim Kennedy, who just came from the site. He said, Jim, stop, stop. Did you go to the site? Yes, I did. Did you see Ashwani? Yeah, great guy. See the vehicle? Yeah, it's beautiful. Did you look inside the vehicle? He said, yeah, I did. I said, was it clean? He said, man, you could eat your breakfast off the floor. I knew right then, right there, that we were onto something. And so, you know, if you think about that, why, why, why the messy vehicle to a clean vehicle? Well, Ashwani had now a sense of autonomy. You know, he had made this decision to buy the truck himself, okay? He had ownership. That was very clear that this had a big impact on him. And so this story continues. Ashwani was involved in many things, uh, but about a year later, he called me and said, Ron, when you come to Toronto, we have to have a coffee. Of course, you know, I, like most leaders, your brain starts going in some bad places. I think he's going to quit. Someone's hurt on site. We're losing the contract. It could be anything. So I get to Toronto, we go into a coffee shop, and we walk in, and Swanee sits down. He's got a smile on his face, and he opens up his laptop. And lo and behold, Ashwani shows me a 15-page PowerPoint presentation about how my company, Source Security, is going to expand to his native country of India. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. This guy makes $13 an hour. And it didn't start there. It started, the first page pulled from his PowerPoint is our core values. That's the most important thing for this guy. And then it goes on. It goes on to show the different cities we're going to expand to, their last 10 years of population growth. I could have paid someone from MIT to do this. <laughs> He's got, you know, if we're going to have a joint venture, if we're going to go into the silent partnership, how we're going to get bank financing. If we're going offshore, I didn't ask about that the estimate in cost. I mean, it, this is just a small sample of this. It blew me away, you know? I mean, why would he take his time, the time out of his day, he's got five children, <clears throat> to work on this? And the answer is because he is now a passionate stakeholder, okay? Not a shareholder, a passionate stakeholder in my company. He'll do anything for my business. And so, the question was, what did this do for our business? Well, in 2012, we started to do these things. You could see we started to scale. Gazelles played a huge part in this as well. And in 2015, we really started to fly. We had so many of these stories. And at that point, we had an army of individuals that we tapped into their, their individual skills that were outside of their daily job description. We had people doing so many things for our company. We shut down 11 offices across the country removed 14 salaried operation managers and four regional managers. That may be scary for a few in this room. Somebody just left in the back, said I'm done, right? <laughs> so it was unbelievable. So at that point, look, I did ask myself a tough question. We had this purpose of changing the industry. I was having a ball. But in kind of top rating style, the question to me was, would I be excited to reinvest in the industry today, knowing what I know about it? And the answer was no. So I decided to go to market, invited a few players to the table. Uh, we end up selling to a giant. It's a US company, Allied Universal, four and a half billion dollar company. And I can tell you that everyone always told me, look, Ron, you're in a shitty industry with very low barriers of entry. You'll never get more than a three to five times multiple, ever. 
And we didn't have a fancy technology. We used technology. We had nothing like that. We, we had a bunch of passionate stakeholders that were thinking strategically about our company. I could never get my old management to do that. They were putting out fires all day. We had strategic thinkers that were from 10 to $13 an hour. So that was our exit, 24 times multiple in an industry that's never seen that. So look, in closing, I, if I can do this with security guards, $10 an hour security guards that don't come to our office, you can do that with your staff. And so my challenge to you is when you leave this place, when you go back to your offices, set your people free. Give them their brains back. It'll be the biggest change that'll ever happen to your company. Thank you. Oh, spectacular. By the way, I want to underpin some of the numbers. Uh, so you got 1,500 security guards yeah. with a total of how much management? So when we sold, uh, we had seven management for 1,500. Seven. And that is the future. Uh, we saw Hire, uh, the big white goods manufacturer out of China, 74,000 employees, just got rid of all 10,000 managers between them and the rest of the employees, and they put them in teams, mm -hmm. 4,000 micro teams. And so that's why if we could uh, flash it back up there, Ron's book uh, is so critical. It just came out a few months ago. You've got copies out there. Yeah. And it really is the how-to guide of how do we pivot from these traditionally structured organizations when it was a time when we organized mm -hmm. muscle. To now we've got to organize brains, which got to mirror what it is that we're doing today. Yeah, absolutely. So the book, Outrageous Empowerment, is in story fashion. So you'll get some laughs out of it. And our company, Conley Owens, does exactly this. Our purpose is to engage the front lines, to create passionate stakeholders on the front lines. And so we're having a ball. All right. Thanks, and Bert. no, oh, you sorry. stay up here. And again, it's rare. Uh, we take this very seriously, but Ron, what you have done to really pioneer an entire new organizational approach to a company at that kind of scale means a lot to us. And so wow. you are our second scale up you winner for 2018. If you would give a huge, huge thank you to Ron Lovett. Ron. Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.